One of the last movies of the summer season wants to race into theaters and into your own imagination. Is Gran Turismo something you should be watching? Stay tuned to This, That, and Theology and find out. You're watching This, That, and Theology, equipping you to use your worldview in the world around you. The summer movie season is just about done. In fact, many kids are back in school already. I know mine are. But there is still at least one summer blockbuster film that's worth spending a little of time in theaters and in our conversation talking about. Gran Turismo is a movie retelling of the real-life story of a racer named Jan, who started out just at 19 years old as an avid Gran Turismo player. If you're not familiar with the Gran Turismo series of video games, these are on Sony PlayStation, and they are what's called a racing sim. Unlike arcade racers, racing sims try to bring as much realism into the game as possible. You can tune your car, they try to use realistic physics models, it, to get as close as you can to actually racing a car. In fact, some fans of the genre are so enthusiastic about racing sims that they'll build entire simulators, including a chair, racing pedals, racing steering wheels, gear shifts, you name it, everything they can possibly do to get the most authentic, realistic racing experience they could. The protagonist of this film was actually one of those avid fans. He built his own racing rig simulator that had a, a car seat, had a place for his pedals and steering wheel as he played the game Gran Turismo. In the movie, we do see a little bit of embellishment in the story, but for the most part, they tried to keep it as close close as they could to the true story about a video gamer who got a chance to race real cars in the F1 circuit. One of the things we see right from the beginning of the film is that as much as Jan loves racing, there are some things about it that just aren't attainable. Motorsports are exceptionally expensive to get into, both the cars themselves and the training that's required, and most racers actually begin racing cars early on in life. So although Jan has a dream of racing cars, it's not really an attainable goal. His father, who was once a professional athlete, sees the danger in having dreams that are simply just not attainable, and out of love for his son, wants him to pursue dreams but are at least in the realm of possibility. Especially as a father of kids who are now moving into adulthood, I particularly resonated with the father character in this film. I could see the love he had for his children and the desire for them to succeed and also the desire for their own hopes and dreams to be something that could be attained rather than being disappointed by something unattainable. In fact, if it wasn't for the incredible opportunity that was brought by Nissan and Sony PlayStation, Jan wouldn't have been able to do anything to make his dream a reality. Because Jan was one of the top Gran Turismo players in the world, he was given the opportunity to actually train on real race cars through the Gran Turismo Academy. Jan and 10 other gamers turned racers are put through grueling physical and mental tests so that they can be trusted with going behind a vehicle that could go 200 miles an hour. In fact, even in the trailers we're reminded that the g-force that is experienced in these race cars is more than twice that of what astronauts experience as they're leaving the planet. Jan, our main character, is the one who makes the cut for Gran Turismo Academy, and he's able to go and take his skills that he learned on a video game onto the real track. As we see in most good sports movies, our main character has to overcome challenges, adversities, and even a few things that are a little frightening as he goes from being a nobody to being a race car superstar. About halfway through the film, Jan experiences a car crash that results in a fatality. And just like any of us experiencing an auto accident on our own, it took a lot of willpower for him to get back on the road. One of my favorite quotes from this film happens after that crash, where he's taken to the site of the crash and told, the crash will not define your career, but how you deal with it will finish your lap. Many of us will experience setbacks, crashes of our own. I don't know a single person who hasn't had some sort of adversity, some challenge in their life that they needed to overcome in, in order to be successful. The crises in our lives don't define us, but how we deal with them do. If you take your family to see this film, you need to be aware that there are at least three messages, and one of those is that video games have a great intrinsic value all of their own. But paired with that is that the dreams and the hopes that your kids may have or that you may have 
have as you're playing video games are often things that just aren't in the universe of attainability. It's good to have dreams that go beyond the scope of what we think we could possibly attain. Even though Jan was able to make his impossible dream a reality, it took an external force, someone outside of his own reality, in order to make it happen. If it wasn't for the Gran Turismo Academy, he would still have to face the hard life lessons that his father was desperately trying to teach him. As parents, we should resonate with the parents in this film, understanding that oftentimes our kids will have dreams that are just not really attainable, and how we as parents help them understand that they can do anything but anything is still within its limitations. We also, as parents, need to remind our children that it's not the crisis, but how we deal with the crisis that defines us. Using films like Gran Turismo helps us talk to our kids about opportunity, about dreams, and how we handle crises. There is one significant drawback to seeing this film, however, and I know I kind of buried the lead by putting it last. The language in this film is really actually quite intense. This film is rated PG-13, and it's rated PG-13 not because of any sexual comment or messaging that might be in it. And while it does say it is for violence, that's mainly in car crashes, and those are fairly bloodless, the language from the very first scenes, especially between the PR guy and the pit crew, is quite intense. Despite the language use, this film is probably one of my favorite films of the entire summer, and it's had some pretty stiff competition. I love the fact that it's based on a true story about a real person who was able to do something that was impossible. This film is chock full of high intensity racing moments in some cars that I can only dream of getting behind the wheel of. I love the positive message that it has for families, and the fact that the family is portrayed in such a good light. There's lots in this film to talk about, to be encouraged by, and even to challenge us as we go throughout our own lives. What things are we not striving for because they seem just too impossible? Are we giving up on dreams because we think they're impossible? You may have noticed that there hasn't been a lot of postings on This, That, and Theology in the last month. I've been running into some technical difficulties and some scheduling conflicts, but we're back and I have a backlog of films. Be sure to stay tuned to the channel as I'll be catching up with those over the next week or so. Thank you for watching This, That, and Theology. Hopefully this has been helpful to you and I will see you next week where we'll have more movie reviews and conversations about This, That, and Theology. You've got to prove to everyone that you belong. Gran Turismo, based on a true story. But I won't stop now.